The title of Grand Master was first officially awarded in 1950. Now, in 2017, at the St. Louis Winter Invitational, that tradition continues. Hello chess fans and welcome back to St. Louis for day two of the 2017 Winter Invitational. Today we play two rounds of chess in the GM and IM Norm tournament fields. Now in this tournament, the up and coming players who don't yet have their prospective titles are going at it with the guys who already do. And if they have a performance usually six and a half out of nine or better, then they will get one of the benchmarks, one of the norms out of three to get that title. Stick with us right here on YouTube over the next week as we talk to some of the hopefuls, some of whom have come from all over the world to participate in this truly international event. For seven players, the objective, earn a norm. However, the means to doing that differs for each player. For six and a half points, Gorovitz, Liang, Burke, Ali Morandi, and Kumar can earn a GM norm. For only six points, Cheka and Abrahamian can earn a GM norm. And additionally, believe it or not, for four and a half points, Kumar and Abrahamian are eligible for an IM norm in this section. All right, joining me now is FIDE master Justice Williams, the famous Justice Williams. I think we've all in the chess world heard of him by now. And today, with the black pieces, uh, he defeated Aaron Grabinski. Justice, first of all, congratulations. Um, take us through some moments of this game. Okay. All right, so uh, before the game even started, my opponent showed up uh, pretty late. You only get a half an hour uh, before you're forfeited, and he showed up like 29 minutes late. So I was pretty glad that he showed up because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to forfeit win. Uh, so we got into a standard uh, London position and um, I just went into a queen b6. I was hoping that uh, he would actually exchange queens. And I was thinking uh, this position was pretty fine for black. Uh, knowing Aaron, I know like he, he, he wants to play aggressive, even he wants to play aggressive, but he plays the London. So it's like, it's a, uh, I just know that if I play solid that uh, he'll try to just uh, continue pushing. So even though I wanted this position, I knew he wasn't really gonna go into this position because it just seems too solid for black. It's not much here for white. I could probably play either E6 or Bishop F5. Probably Bishop F5 is better here. Uh, knight b5, uh, maybe rook a5, a4, and I can play either e6 or probably just bishop c2. And yeah, I think black is doing pretty well here. Maybe bishop b6 or something like that. Uh, so yeah, and um. If he plays a normal move like knight d2, you can't really stop the pawn push. And uh, this position is pretty good for black. Uh, a3, just b4 anyways. And this is pretty, pretty comfortable for black. So instead, he played uh, queen c2. Actually, actually spent a lot of time in this position when I was preparing it, just looking at queen b6. I, Looked at queen c2 for like a minute, but I didn't see anything too dangerous with it. I just thought it was just simple play. Uh, and so here, from right here, is, for me, it's just I'm out of my prep and I'm just playing regular chess. I play h6, uh, h3, e6, and then now I'm just playing for equality. So I'm just gonna play queen d8 with my plan of playing bishop to d6. I was actually expecting knight e5, I'll probably just play rook c8. Oh, wait. At first, I was going to play rook c8. I didn't think he'd play 95 right away. Uh, so, if a move like bishop e2, uh, I'll just play bishop d6. And this position is pretty solid for black. Uh, I think black has all the chances here. And it's just, this is probably something he saw as well, and he just chose not to go into it. Um, but either way, this this is pretty solid for white as well. Uh, it should be a draw. Um, he played knight e5, and I've seen a couple games. D takes e5 is pretty bad here. Um, he just played knight d7, and 
now he goes to c5 and then now he goes to d3 and it's just pretty bad for white uh now he goes to c5 and this is or uh, maybe bishop here and this is pretty bad uh Probably has e4. I didn't really calculate this much. e4. Uh, and I was thinking probably I could take on e4 or I could just move the bishop. I wasn't too sure which was better. I'm thinking bishop g6 is probably better. Just keeping the... Um, well, if I play pawn takes e4, he has some play now. And he, has, he controls the d6 square. And... My plan was to put pressure on the e5 pawn, but he has two defenders now, so I should probably just play bishop g6. And uh, and then play knight c5 next move, forcing him to take on d5 or something like that. And I and I still hold c4. So I took on e5, bishop takes, and then bishop d6. I was expecting just takes here on d6. And you know, like I said before, this is uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm I'm content with it. Well, I'm content with a draw here. Um, yeah, if knight of three, I was looking maybe at just uh, bishop e four here, threatening to take on f three and take on e five, and just forcing him to take this anyways. Knight uh, e five, probably just castle. Black is probably a little better. Black has the beef, uh, the pawn push, uh, the pawn storm, b5, a5, uh, b4. And uh, white just has to find a way to hold. I think white should pretty much hold in this position. But he took on f6, and I knew, I knew he's, I knew there was a chance he would probably take on f6, simply because I know he's just an aggressive player, especially with white. Um, but he gave me the two bishops, and I was pretty happy with that. After castles, I was really hoping for like knight takes f5, pawn takes, and then my two pawns in the center, they're just gonna steamroll. Um, I didn't really consider castles queen side much. Probably uh, bishop e2, uh, either f4 or rook e8. I guess I could go f4, castles, f3 is good, right? Um, yeah, f3 is pretty much winning. Uh, and yeah, it's queen d2, probably just rook e8, castles f3 again, so he'll probably have to castle queen side and f3 again. And this is just pretty much bad, uh, losing the queen here. So I was pretty happy with my position, especially after knight takes f5, but uh, Aaron is a good player, so he didn't play uh, knight takes f5. He played queen d2. And I was really considering just um, him castling queen side. I never really took castling queen side seriously. Um, I was, and for in this position, I debated on three moves for like 10, 15 minutes, and all of them were pretty much fine. And I don't know why I did that. Um, and I ended up playing like the weaker of the moves, I believe. I was looking at either rook d8, and, and uh, so if castles, I was expecting like a d5 push, which never really came. I just thought d5 in this position would have been okay. I don't know, uh, bishop here. And let's say if I make a move like this, I was always expecting d5. I thought this was like his best chance for play. Uh, it never really came. And I didn't want to commit my rook to either d8, because if he castles kingside, I would want my f rook on e8 and my a rook on d8. But uh, if he castles queenside, I would want my f rook on d8 and my a rook on c8. So I didn't really want to commit any of my rooks yet. So I played king h8, because I saw in a lot of those lines later on, the e6 pawn becomes uh, a trouble. So I just wanted to get the king out of check here without committing my rooks. And sure enough, he cast a queen side, and then now I get to hit my rooks in the correct position. Um, rook f1, the, his his whole play kind of surprised me here because he he's an aggressive player, but he didn't really play aggressively in this type of position. He played rook f1, like threatening f3 and stuff, but that's, d5 is a move I was expecting here and just 
something more aggressive than what he played. Like Rook F1 didn't really pit fear in my heart, right? So he just played a uh, Rook F1. I played Queen G5. Now with F3, just Bishop F4, and this is pretty nasty. From um, this is not something White would want to get into. Um, so he played G3, Queen H5, attacking another pawn, not allowing him to play F3. I just take it. So, um, played H4. Yeah, and I was just able to do whatever I wanted in this position. Um, I still think white is fine. Um, black is better, but uh, white is not. There's no way that white is losing in this position. And I, I'm not sure about the move King B1, because King B1 just allows B4. It just invites B4. and. I didn't think that was the best thing for him. Probably just like maybe a3 making me play a5 was probably better. Um, like I said, uh, I like to move d5, and it just never came. Um, maybe d5 in this position isn't so great. Just bishop takes. Um, if pawn takes, then yeah, I just want a pawn. Now bishop takes f, uh, bishop takes d5. Now I have rook c5, and this should be pretty good for black. Uh, bishop takes f7. Uh, yeah, just rook takes d2. Oh, I guess not. If rook takes d2, then he has bishop takes h5, and yeah, I didn't really see bishop takes d1. That's just crazy. So yeah, I guess d5. I guess my gut was right that d5 should be played sooner or later. Like, I I just, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't, he just stopped playing aggressive and it just allowed me to work. I probably just play bishop g6 or something. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah, he can't move any of his pieces really. So I guess this is okay. Um, but I thought I probably had rook c5 at first, but I guess I, I probably didn't. I want to see this again, bishop takes f7. Yeah, I guess I, yeah, I don't have it here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, bishop b6, now I'm threatening b4, things like that. He plays king a1, he invites b4. Uh, I play it, knight c4, takes on c3. Now here, I'm pretty happy here. Uh, the knight is not on e3 anymore, so I could possibly push e3 soon. Um, the king is a little weak, and I wasn't too sure how I was gonna win, but I knew that black was better here. Um, queen goes to e3, stopping e3. Um, I didn't, I didn't like his the way his pieces were placed, so I just played a5, queen b5, knight b2, stopping a4. And here is when like, like you know you have a good position, but you don't know how to win. So I wasn't too sure how to win. But he, he really just made it easy for me uh, after bishop b6, f4. Uh, I'm not sure what this was about. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what this was about. On f4, pawn takes, queen takes. I spent a lot of time in this position debating after rook takes what to do. Uh, I think I probably just still go rook c7, something like that. I wasn't too sure whether I should play rook c7 or a move like bishop g6. But then I was afraid of moves like g4, and then I probably have to play h5. And this isn't something that I probably should do. Um, I was also thinking about like bishop g8 in these type of positions. So now I could play f6 soon and stop and check me threats. But he also has his, his attack um, in the works as well, so I have to consider that as well. And plus, I just like this bishop on this diagonal, stopping every piece from going onto the B file. And it's just hard for him to play. It just, it causes a lot of problems. But he ended up playing queen takes, and this was kind of a suspect move. I think rook takes was more flexible. Uh, I played rook c7, defending f7, rook d1. Yeah, here I was expecting g4, um, I, and I, I think g4 is probably the best. Um, the threat is g5, uh, sacrificing a pawn, but just opening up the h file and creating some type of counterplay. And he just never played aggressively here. Um, yeah, he just played rook d1. 
And so I was getting low on time, so I just decided to stop thinking. I was like, I have to push for an attack sooner or later, so I just pushed. Um, after bishop takes, I probably just play queen a5. If bishop b3, just rook a7. I mean, there's nothing really concrete here, but um, just with, uh, there's just a lot of pressure uh, by black in this position. I was fine with that. I didn't really see anything, but as long as I have pressure, then that's fine. Probably knight c4, queen b5, knight takes, queen takes. Soon he, he probably just played king b2 here. And something like this was, I, I thought this was pretty good for me. C4, um, probably just rook b8 now. And uh, king a1. And, uh, well, my threat here is queen b4. Oh wait, my threat here is queen takes a2, sorry. And so yeah, here probably play king here. Um, I wasn't too sure if I should probably just try to, try to get the bishop in the game now or something like that. But this position doesn't seem bad for black at all. Rook c3. And it's just, it's a lot of things going on here. Probably bishop c2 is good. Uh, rook takes, now rook takes b3. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's good, but it's just it's just a lot of things going on in this position that he has to take account of. Probably work it. I like this move actually. This move this move looks pretty cool. Now my threat is queen takes a two, and I think that's pretty cool. So I probably would have played this. I don't know. Um, rook d two. Yeah. Um, I think this position is pretty good for black, even though black is down a pawn, but it's uh it's hard for white to play here. But yeah, I I seen this move. Um Knight takes e4. I didn't really consider it much. I just thought it was losing and like pretty close like uh on the spot really. Um now I'm threatening to take on a4. Um his best move is queen f1 for sure. And it's probably like at least into the same thing as before. Probably has to play king b2. This is probably a, a, a worse version of this. And then just rook b8. And uh, I think black is doing more than fine here. Uh, now if queen c4, I could probably play like bishop b4. And now my bishop goes to d5 and it's in the game. And yeah, this is pretty, uh, this is something black um, It's hoping for it. And I just knew C4 on the spot was bad. Yeah. He just played C4. Uh, yeah, C4 just bishop takes D4 and this is pretty much game over. Um, yeah, and I have passed E pawn, I'm up in exchange and this can't be, uh, yeah, this, this is pretty hard for white to hold. So he just resigned in this position, but this wasn't Aaron's best game, and this uh, wasn't my best game. Um, but uh, there was just a lot of chances for him that he just never uh, took advantage of. Um, I guess this is one of my more lucky games, simply from the fact that he showed up 29 minutes late, uh, and I'm glad that he showed up at that 29th minute, uh, and just that he didn't take advantage of the moves that he could have. I, I just think this was a, uh, a pretty lucky game. But well, I guess. Lucky or not, a win is a win, right, Justice? And and uh, even though we're really early on, you are you are already in the clear lead at two points, even if it's just by half a point. So that is something to talk about. And also, you have two I am norms. So this could be the big event. Tell us about your expectations for this tournament. I mean, I have a little joke going with Aaron and stuff. Uh, I told him that I was going to get eight and a half. Uh, right now, I think I'm looking pretty good. <laughs> uh, but no, nah, it's just about playing. Um, it's just playing good chess, uh, playing the best moves. Well, um, just playing the, the best moves in the positions. And I think if I keep playing um, pretty solid moves or the best moves in, um, in my games, then I should do pretty well here. Um, yeah, it's just about playing the best moves and 
in one game. I was just taking each game, uh, just taking it one game at a time. And I mean, I can't, I can't be mad at myself. Chess is a young man's game increasingly, and a lot of the players in this tournament are students, including yourself. How are your studies at Webster, if they are, how are they affecting this tournament? Well, I mean, I'm, well, I'm miss obviously, well, first I'm missing school for this tournament. Um, you know, we're missing a couple of classes. But other than that, um, I guess for me, it's, it's easy to balance. Um, I do a lot of reading, uh, and you can't, I mean, you can't be upset that you get to do what you love. Like, you have to do what you love. Like, if I love to read, then I'm gonna read. Uh, and I'm just glad I'm taking classes that are uh, helping me read. Um, but yeah, just being being able to come to Webster was a great opportunity. There's a lot of chess going on around here, and I get to study here, and it's just uh, an amazing opportunity for me, and I'm just glad to have received this opportunity. Um, yeah, that was... Well, Justice, good luck on the rest of the tournament. It's been a pleasure having you. And there are two rounds being played today. So let's take a look at the standings after the I Am Norm section, round three. Seven players in this field, eligible for a norm. However, the means to get there is different for each player. For six and a half points, Grabinski, Hua, Banawa, Kolas, Williams, and Shankar will earn an I Am Norm. And due to the tougher field he will face, Doug Eckert only has to get six points to earn his I Am Norm. The 2017 St. Louis Winter Invitational continues through Tuesday, February the 21st. Follow all of the action, including the live games, at uschesschamps.com.